You've been owning motorsports for a really long time, and you remind me a lot of um, my body, my buddy, and 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 uh, old boss Rick Hendrick. And I always give Rick a hard time because he doesn't have to work, he doesn't have to keep going, he doesn't have to keep pushing and and trying to succeed and win races. He could go enjoy himself. He has a lot of opportunity in a lot of places he could go just to hang out and and fish or do nothing. What is it uh, at, at your age that continues to push you to be, um, you know, a competitor? And uh, what is it like? What? Why? Why aren't you guys uh, somewhere enjoying all the success that you've had over the years? What What keeps you coming back and and getting up in the morning, and go to work? Well, I'll tell you, Dale. I've got over sixty thousand people working for us worldwide today. And just the fact I've got to worry about those people under these circumstances is the reason I come in every day. And this race team has built our brand on a worldwide basis. And success we have is bred through the entire organization. It's given us the opportunity to bring a lot of young people up, maybe not in a race car, but in a car dealership or in a rental counter at our truck dealerships. And I think Rick feels the same way. This is something... uh, You know, my fishing trip uh, and maybe golf game is going to the racetrack on Saturdays to see guys like you compete. But the relationships that have spawned from the business or the racing side into my business have been amazing. And I think the there's always tension. There's always something in racing or in business that keeps your head on. And I think that's helped me at my age to stay focused and want to be a winner. And I think the most important thing is that I can lead and support the team members, the business members, and our partners around the world every day. And that's, what I, that's my main thought today as we go through this CBI D19. It's, it's, it's first and foremost in my mind. And I think that we have to give back. We try to do that as a company. I do it as an individual. And certainly my family does. Now, hold on. Yeah, we'll get to COVID-19 in a second. But you're not just maintaining you're adding on, and you're not adding on a couple of uh, boards of directors here. You're acquiring big properties. So this is no small undertaking. You know, I know you've been asked this already, but we'll ask it again. Why? Why? One question is, why are you not wanting to slow down? But the other question is, why are you adding on to stuff so substantial and ma- you know magnificent that we're talking about an entire racing series, an entire, you know, one of the, most iconic speedways ever? Well, your first question is, look, I love what I'm doing. Uh, I'm motivated. Uh, My wife uh, of 46 years continues to support me along with my 13 grandchildren. So to me, my my grandchildren learned their numbers by looking at the race cars on the racetrack. But uh, that's a short story. (laughs) But more important, you asked the the question uh, about adding on. And quite honestly, uh, if we were sitting here six months ago doing the same program, we'd be talking about something else. But uh, on the grid at Laguna Seca back at uh, the end of September, uh, Tony George came up to me. In fact, at the Brickyard, he, I met him up in the Pagoda. He said, look, I'd like to talk to you about the future. I didn't really know exactly what he meant. And then I saw him at Laguna just before the start of the race. He said, Roger, I really want to get together and talk about the future. And I, re- I remembered what he had said to me a couple of weeks earlier at the Brickyard. So I went down to, to, to Indy for a New Gardens championship dinner and got there two or three hours early and met with he and Mark Miles. And we went through a, a long discussion, somewhat emotional with Tony, uh, about that uh, the trustees had decided that uh, you know, it was time that uh, you know, they looked at uh, you know, selling the Speedway. Uh, the trustees have an opportunity and the former governor uh, of Indiana, Mitch Daniels was a lead trustee. They'd sold Clabber Girl, which was their flower business uh, back in Terre Haute. And so we sat down and talked about it. And to me, it's opportunity. You know, I've always looked at uh, undervalued, underperforming businesses, but here was a big sw- pivot for me. This was a successful business. It was something that uh, we had a lot of domain knowledge. Remember, we bought Michigan in bankruptcy. So we built California. We were co-owners of, of Homestead with, uh, with the Francis. We had Rockingham. We, we run the races at uh, Belle Isle today, our team does. So when I had that opportunity, I said one thing. I said, I'm very interested. So the next day, you know, we signed a confidentiality agreement and kept it completely quiet. We went through a process, I think, uh, 
I think on October 4th, we announced uh, a merger agreement and then went on and uh, had the uh, opportunity to close this uh, early in January. But I said to someone the other day, you'll get a kick out. I said, I think I owned the track inside. I didn't know I was going to own the outside. So <laughs> now I'm, I'm flat out and trying to how we can make it better for the guest experience. And, you know, obviously every step I take in that track and when I go to the museum, I see such history. It's just amazing. And I, the other day I asked a, one of the historians, do you have any pictures of the 51 race? Sure enough, they had about 25 pictures. The guys in leather jackets, the cars side by side, little old wood pagoda there. I think I was sitting in the grandstands in those days to see those pictures. Just That was your first race, right? That was the first time you had been there? Yeah, yeah, think about that. That's, That's awesome. But when, when, does, when does this acquisition, if not already, when is it worth it to you? When is it successful? Well, I don't think I'll ever know that in my lifetime. Someone else will make that decision for me maybe 10 or 15 or 20 years from now. But uh, I hope that we bring uh, a lot of guest experience. We bring great racing there. It's, it's the history. It's iconic. And what, Dale, what you don't realize, this is a generational race. Think about the number of tickets that are sold just 500 hours after the event. People want yeah. those same tickets. And when you think about uh, coming into this tough period we have now, the amount of people that have committed to come to the track for the race. So you don't give up your tickets. You keep them and you pass them on to, your, to the next generation. And the worldwide notoriety and to think about, uh, you know, they have 250 to 300,000 people. Or, and we do have 230,000 real seats. I never really knew that. I didn't count them all yet, but maybe I'll, be, I'll do that one day here while I'm hanging around. There were two things that happened to me at Indianapolis Speedway that are far more memorable and, uh, uh, and rewarding experiences that, uh, that I think fans would just love to have the perspective of. One of them was driving the pace car, uh, leading the, uh, the, Ray, the Indianapolis 500. Um, looking back in the mirror, and seeing those cars. So I had been out on the grid. I had stood by the cars in the garage. I had been in awe of the technology. I, I sat in, uh, in the cars, one of your cars, and um, thought that I had really gotten a great uh, introduction into, into you know, what these cars were about. But really seeing them lined up behind you in that mirror, uh, was a really emotional experience. And they really did look like a squadron of fighter planes, low to the ground, in formation. I'll never forget it. Um, the other experience that I'll, that I'll always hold dear is climbing in that creek out there behind the racetrack <laughs> to fish out a brick. So I love history. And that was just last year. Yeah, I love history and I love tangible history. Um, I don't care. Just just today, we was walking around on the property looking for wind damage from these storms we had that night, seeing a fence post with old bob wire hanging off of it from some some farmer putting the wood putting the ground and seventy years ago. I love just tangible history, and I'd be able to go down in that creek and dig twelve, fifteen inches down into the creek bed to pull out a full brick. Now there's a bunch of frag fragments and they're up close to the surface, but if you want the real deal, you got to go deep uh, to pull out something that <laughs> was on that racetrack and that those cars had crossed over. You can, you can look at it and see the rubber that has worked into the surface, the top surface of the race of the brick itself. Um, just really is hard to, it's hard to imagine, you know, what that brick saw and what it was exposed to and, and the, the history that it was, part of um and so that track is uh it must be a really emotional thing to possess such a historical uh racetrack or 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 landmark and i'm not i promise you we're not trying to put you in the rocking chair but who beyond you mentioned it like the the success of this racetrack will be known be, beyond your years who who is who are those people um, who are those people that are going to carry on your legacy uh, to maintain uh, the the legacy of Indianapolis to 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 continue Penske as as a as a motorsports operation juggernaut? You know who's who are the people that you're trusting 
uh, to, to, to manage that going forward. Well, Dale, just for answer that, you know, I had the chance to drive the pace car for the hundred and I said exactly the same thing you did. When I looked in the mirror, it looked like a bunch of fighter planes low to the ground, ready to take off. I, I, I said exactly the same thing, but, uh, you know, from a, a forward thinking and, and when I think about the track and ownership, we've got some very good people there. Mark Miles is the CEO, you know, we're Penske entertainment owns that venue. You know, we have the IMSP, which is the production company, and we certainly have IndyCar, but is in all our businesses, we have people that have the responsibility to run these. And remember, you know, our family has been involved in the, in the racetrack business for a long time, and I would expect them to stay completely involved. And then the people we have, Mark, my, Doug Bowles, who you know, just does an outstanding job you know, running that speedway for Mark and the team, but the internal, you know, Kelly who runs the ticketing and, and the jo John Lewis and the people outside that are running the outside of the track. We just got some terrific people. And that's why your race team is successful, right? You can't work on every car. You can't make every call and the successful business for you talk about Rick and, and some of the people, your dad was like that. These guys knew what they wanted, but relied on those key people. And that's what I'm going to do in the future. And hopefully someone will give us a great card here 20 years from now. And hopefully we've made it a better guest experience. It's a great racetrack. We've got great racing. You saw the race last year. So I think that, uh, you know, that's something that uh, certainly I hope will be a plus for everyone in the future. Hey, have you ever gone waiting in that Creek? I have not, but I've now seen that you've Brits. heard Dale's story, do you sort of want to? Yeah, I've got to go. I got to go find that out. I have to. <laughs> I can't believe you've never done that. So you hang around with the right people. You find out something you don't know. I'm going to have to do that. I'll report back. Okay. I thought everybody that I thought everybody that was involved in Indy knew all the bricks were in the creek, and <laughs> there's still a lot of them. It's funny because um, I thought so. Rutledge Woods, the one that told me, "Man, we're going to go back here and we're going to get you a brick." I'm like, all right, because I've heard about other drivers, NASCAR guys going back in there and wading into the creek to get their bricks. And so I'm thinking I'm just going to go back here and we're going to see a lot of bricks. I'm just going to pick one up there. I got my brick. And we go back there and, man, we're looking and we're not finding, uh, you know, a nice full brick, just a bunch of busted ones. <laughs> and then, there, you know, there was some debris and glass and you got to be careful walking around out there. And, and, uh, and then we figured it out. So – and you're, you got to, you got to imagine they were probably taking them things over there in the back of a truck or something and dumping them off in uh, using a wheelbarrow, something in piles. Right. So we would, find, <laughs> sorry, my dog Gus, we would find them in clusters like big piles. Uh, but they, they are now, you know, several inches underneath the surface of the Creek. So if you want to find a brick, you got to dig down further than you think. And they're going to be in these little clusters, right? So when you start to run into a bunch of fragments, go down, go down, go down into the ground. And man, there's a bunch of full bricks all piled up, like probably three, four feet underground. It's, uh, I'm trying to imagine this in my mind when they pulled them all up because there were thousands of millions of them, right? And uh, that they pulled off that racetrack and ended up throwing most of them over in the creek. This is why we wanted to have you on because we didn't know if you actually knew what exactly what kind of gold mine you just purchased. Yeah, I didn't and think so. We wanted to, to tell you. I didn't think we'd be well, able to tell him anything new today. Well, <laughs> let me let me say this: that uh, I, I I have a brick. Someone has given me a brick, but I, I I can't lie to you. I've never been to the creek to get a brick, but I can tell you it's going to be on my bucket list here. <laughs> yes. Next thirty days, I'll let you guys. I'll let you guys know. I'll, I'll maybe have to pull my pants up and walk out there right there. That's right. That's yes, right. sir. I know a good spot where there's still some more down in this one little cluster.